Welcome back to this channel. Today's channel shout out is the Karen, Tena, Sherry Dunn, Juliet, Diva, Sirica, Lee, Kefton, Stacy, Roslyn, Fancy, Nicholas, Marsha, Keisha, Viola Young, Philip, Cynthia, Cheyenne and Thelma from Jamaica. Jacqueline, Maki, Susan, Barbara, Rose, Kelvin, Trisha, Pearl and others from Trinidad and Tobago. As, Jessica, Gabriel, Shalini, Esther, Marie Claire, from Nigeria. Consuelo, Brenda, Frenchon, Ace, Sandra, Carline, Rhea Ray, Kathy, YHWH Princess, Darlene, Alubukola, Paula, Riviera, Tandy, Rochelle, Jean, Martha, Tracio, Hannah, McDonald, Jane, Kim, Nsha, Walanya, Priscilla, Dana, Archie, Crystal, Rahima B, Tyrone and Edison from USA. Lillian and Joyce from Lebanon. Pascaline, Atram, Rejoice, God is Good, Iwara, Laurentia and Almasi from Ghana. Maison Ilvan Ebna from Canada. Evelyn, Daisy, Simon, Hannah, Mrs. B, Lydia Julius, Rose, Lyra, Liana, Liz and Monica from Kenya. Precious, Beverly from Bahamas. Natasha, Malika and Dolly from UK. Nko Saikazi, Linda, Ngunoe from Namibia. Cheryl, Wendy from Barbados. Pricord from India. Trisha, Joy, and Zodwa from Zambia. Melissa, Kags, Rafi Lo, Lolly, Kea, Moruesi, Annette, Constance and Rosal, from South Africa. Joan, Esther, Susanna, Kathy, Nsum, Irene, Margaret, Solomon and Viola from Uganda. Bella, Sarah, Corey and children from Australia. Josiah and Zafine from St. Martins. Olna, Shella from Cameroon. Josephine from St. Thomas. Alice from Malawi. Sarah, Constance from Zimbabwe. Josephine from Philippines. Sarah, from China. Carissa from Dominica. Dancy, from Nevis. Namada of you, Blessing, Lisa, from Saudi Arabia. Niket, Susan, Andre, from St. Vincent. Perul, from Pakistan. Jennifer from Curacao. Queen Esther from Namibia. Geneva from St. Lucia. Drop your name and where you are watching from in the comment section to get a shout out from this channel. Now let's dive right into the video. We are here now, tell me didn't you kill your husband? Are you deaf? We have been asking you the same question for the past few days, you have not been answering us. Why did you kill your husband? In a marriage that is just two years, and you killed that man of God, just like that, you are a criminal, since you got here you have not said anything. Answer my question now, why did you kill him? Why? I have something to say. Okay what do you have to say? Can I get some sweet to lick? What? What are you saying? What kind of nonsense and stubborn woman is this? Are you in your senses at all? Answer my question now before I deal with you. Mrs. Vera, just tell me why you killed your husband. Why did you kill my son? Answer me, why did you kill James? So you still have the strength to talk, and to walk around, look at your back, what do you see? Nothing. So you can't identify your shadow. Which shadow? I mean what has my shadow got to do with this? You can ask your shadow what killed your son. Have you forgotten that you cannot hide anything from God, you cannot. What happened earlier that got her into the police station? Hello sweetheart, we are missing you daily, oh Vera, she is fine, she should be somewhere in the house, we have just finished our breakfast, that reminds me. Pastor Richard called, he said he needed some money, $50,000 for his family to settle some issues. Where do we get that kind of money from, didn't you tell him that the church pocket is empty, we followed God's leading and donated all to the orphanage home. I did but he kept on pleading and asking for money, he was aware, in fact him and the church secretary were involved in the process. I don't know why he should be asking for money again, when he knows we have taken everything we had to the orphanage, about $67,000, I told him but. Then why is he asking for money? It is well, I am missing you so much, though, Vera is not missing you, she liked playing with her daddy, I am missing you so strongly, and I will be expecting you. Please don't forget to come with a lot of candies, and chocolate at least for Vera. Okay, no problem. At the police station. Mrs. Mindy, your husband is dead, did you kill him? 
You know that I am your personal lawyer and you can tell me anything you know, I am here to help you. Was he a troublesome man? Did he harass you? Did he mistreat you? Is he a monster? A monster. That man is a beast. Beast. At least you are speaking after all this while, I'm all here's. Why is nobody talking about his father? His father, Pastor Richard. Hello, who is speaking? Dead, how, where? Ha 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 ha. I have to get going now, I will come back later, I will see you later. What happened before the police station? What I am saying is that, there are a lot of challenges in the church, there are a lot of things that is taking money from the church. You know as a friend I told you about the orphanage we donated $67,000 to, so what I am saying is that the church is very broke, we are very broke now. Yes I understand the church expenses, but sir I need this money, I am desperate it is very urgent, please sir, help me out even if it's from your personal account, I will appreciate it. Personal account, I don't run a personal account, there is no money in our account, we live by faith, myself and my wife are surviving only by faith. There is nothing at hand, we put into God's work everything, but when I discussed with my wife, she felt pity for the whole situation, she gave me $5,000 to give to you. Thank you so much sir, we are grateful. Daddy what is happening, why are you so sad? James, this is what I have been telling you, that you must be rich, you just have to be rich, you have no excuse not to be rich. You must be wealthy. See I came to Pastor Michael to request for $50,000 to pay for your school fees. He gave me just $5,000, what will I do with it? And look at the massive buildings all around. The church owns all these buildings but when I come to the church for assistance, they won't give me. I wish your mom was alive, this wouldn't have been happening. Daddy, it is well, money will come your way and you will be able to take care of me in Jesus name. Amen. Thank you for encouraging me, James let's go. At the police station. You just need to talk, are you not tired of the whole thing? You just need to speak, pity yourself, pity the condition you are in, you are pregnant for God's sake, why are you proving stubborn? Okay, are you scared about the world knowing that you killed the father of your unborn child? Are you, it seems like you have forgotten about your church members who are bothered and worried about this rumor of you killing your husband. Mrs. Mindy, can you please talk? What really happened? I will like to say something. Okay go on. If I give birth here, will you take care of my child? That I can't say, but there will be a provision for the child. So why are you disturbing me? Why are you asking me questions? I am not ready to answer your questions, I am fine the way I am, I am fine here. What's going on with that woman? Sir, all the effort to get to truth from her proved abortive, the woman is proving so stubborn, very stubborn sir. She is making a fool of herself, you can't imagine sir. She said she is comfortable where she is, a woman to be comfortable in such a place. Hum, Pastor Richard is also dead, so devastating, three days, three days after the death of Mr. James, the father died also, what is going on? And there is a need for us to buckle our belt and investigate, finding out what is really going on. Yes sir. I will personally see the lady too, so you can go. Okay sir. Vera, your husband's father is dead. I know. You know. All right. Did you kill your husband? Mr. DPO, for you to get the answers to your questions, you need to find out what killed his father. Listen, I am not here for pranks. I am here for a serious business. Did you understand? Yes, I understand. Good. The first question is did you kill your husband? DPO, to get the answers to your question, you need to find out what killed his father. What do you mean? You mean I should know what killed the father then I will know what killed your husband? Is that what you are saying? If you guys are smart enough. Listen, I don't have the luxury of time, are you sure of what you are saying? Not very sure. Woman, don't frustrate me. Who am I to frustrate you? So how did it happen? I don't know sir, it was already 12 p.m. and Pastor Richard was still inside his room, and did not like him, he always comes out by 8 a.m., after his morning prayer. So I decided to come and check and wake him up. That is what happened. Are you sure? Yes. Was he sick? Probably he complained of any illness. He was not sick. Mr. Emmanuel, is what can you say about Pastor Richard? He was my helper. He is the reason why I am still alive. We know that he was a very good man before he died but what I am asking is what happened to him. I don't know anything. I really don't know. I was in my room when Esther made an alarm. Emmanuel, Emmanuel. Then I rushed in, and I met sir is gone. You are his driver right? Yes. 
so you should know if he was sick. Peradventure you have taken him to any pharmacy before, has that ever happened? No, he was very strong, he was never sick, never. Sir. Have you gotten any clues as to what killed that man? Not yet sir. Arrest everyone that is in that house, this matter is becoming complicated, we also need to do an autopsy, as long as the results is yet to come out. They will all remain in our custody, is that understood? Yes sir. You two are under arrest. What? What happened before the police station? We should be thanking God for the success of the village program, I mean, it was a huge success, the Lord really proved himself. That's true, we almost lost hope, the funds we were expecting did not come, we had lack of funds but at the last minute, God made divine provision available. Praise God, God will bless that family, God has used them tremendously for the success of this program, God will bless them. Indeed God will bless them. I hope Mindy and her husband George will be on time. Sir, that reminds me. I have a serious financial need. I have to settle James's school fees. I need the sum of $35,000 desperately. You know James is in his final year. It is urgent that I settle it. I don't know if you can be of help to me sir. Pastor Richard, I don't even have $5,000 in all my bank accounts. The church is so dry too. You know we look unto Jesus for every provision. Sir. I was just wondering that the leftovers we have in the outreach account, we have so much and we didn't even finish spending it. Maybe you could just help me with just a little $35,000, there is still something in the outreach account. Pastor, you are always hasten your conclusion, because the leftover money you are talking about, we used it to get the landed property and to do something small in the village, so that the villagers will have a place to be worshipping. But sir. Good afternoon. Vera how are you? Fine, Daddy I have gained admission. Oh, praise the Lord, God is great, God is beautiful, God is wonderful, thank you my daughter. Vera congratulation, which course? Computer science. I just wish that your mother is here today to witness everything that has just happened. She will be happy looking at us from heaven. Congrats sir, it is well sir. Thank you. Sir, our discussion. Looking unto Jesus the author and the finisher of our faith. I should look unto Jesus. Yes, look unto Jesus and he will never let you down. But sir. See, challenges are all over, now look at my daughter Vera, this is another challenge, challenge is all over, challenges is here and there, we are only trusting God. The Lord will meet your need, Pastor Richard, you are having doubts that I have the money and I don't want to give you but we don't have the money. We trust only in Jesus to make supplies. Alright, thank you sir. Any small thing, he keeps coming here for money, he has been like that even before your mum was called into glory, what do we have? We also trust in God to make provisions. Yes. Jesus how would we raise the money? Where will I get the money for James to return to school? Dad, I believe strongly that God will provide, I mean he will surely do. Pastor Michael, Pastor Michael, James do you know that this same man caused the death of your mother? How? Your mum had breast cancer. This is how it happened. Sir you need to bring the sum of $250,000, we have to do the surgery to remove her breast lump. Jesus, where will I get that huge amount of money from? Sir, treat it as a matter of urgency or you may lose her. God what is all this, why is this happening to me? $250,000, I don't even have $400 in my account, God, but why is this happening, why? Excuse me doctor. Hello pastor. How is your wife? She has a lump in her breast, and we need $250,000 to remove it. Please pastor, how can you be of help to me? Where can we get such a colossal amount? The church account is very very dry. But sir, please you just have to do something, we can announce in the church, maybe members contribution will be enough to get the money. And again sir, you can also contact other pastors from other churches, maybe they could be of help, sir please. I will do that, I will do that, but one thing I am sure of is that the Lord will heal your wife in Jesus name. Thank you sir, it took two weeks for Pastor Michael to raise the money, and it was after your mummy died that he brought the money to me. And then I asked him if the money he bought was for her funeral or for her treatment, my son, I was so sad, I wept and wept bitterly. Hello Vera, have you seen the school calendar? They said the school is resuming on Monday, Daddy said I should start preparing because I will resume on Monday. And you know today is Wednesday, so I need to start packing up my things. 
Okay, congratulations once more. What about you? When will you be coming to school? Till when God provides. I don't understand. I mean there is no money for resumption. Sorry Vera, I am in the middle of a serious discussion. Let me call you back. All right, no problem. That must be Vera. Yes, Dad. And what did she say? She said she will be resuming school on Monday. Can you see? Can you see what I have been telling you? That means her father lied to me. That man had the money all this while. Yet, I begged him but he didn't give me. Pastor Michael okay. At the police station. Mrs. Mindy, do you like the way we are treating you? Do you? You see I want to help you, but there is still need for you to help yourself by telling me the truth. Number one, why did you kill your husband? Number two, how did you know that your father-in-law was dead? I know you have been in our custody all this while. How did you get to know since there was nobody to tell you? I only know that I am happy he is dead. What did you say? Mindy I hope you know that all these things you were saying can be used against you in the court of law. And who told you I don't know Mr. DPO? What happened before the police station? James, I have something to tell you. What is that sir? Good news. Good news. I have gotten your school fees. But how? I mean where? How do you get it I don't understand. I borrowed it. Dad, you didn't have to borrow it, you don't have to. I have to, your education is very important to me. I want you to be successful in life. Thank you so much daddy, God will bless you. Thank you so much sir. A quick one, I want you to marry Vera. Marry Vera, why are you talking about marriage all of a sudden? Not just talking about marriage you are saying I should marry Vera. Yes, that is my choice, I want you to marry Vera. Now? No, in the future, but I want you to start planning now. You have to start you know how men do, you have to plan your way, get close to Vera, make sure no man gets close to her. You understand, because she rightfully belongs to you. I don't get it. Look, you don't need to get it, you don't need to understand, just as I said, period. But dad, is this biblical? Oh stop that, are we talking about the Bible now, we are talking about reality, most times biblical principles does not align with reality, this is reality. I am a pastor, I cannot mislead you, I am telling you the fact, you know you are resuming school, just plan your way. Penetrate her, you know how to access her and it shall be well with you in Jesus name. At the police station. I want you to go to Pastor Richard's house, search the place in and out, also move to Pastor James' place, search everywhere in that house. This lady cannot be playing with our intelligence, there must be something she is hiding, take notes of everywhere and everything. Yes sir. Is that understood? Yes sir. What happened before the police station? Vera, Vera, haven't I warned you to be careful with this boys in the campus, they are dangerous, they don't have good minds. James, I don't understand you, when did you become this jealous? This person you are talking about is my course mate, and my church member, there is nothing involved, and I am sure you know me in the fellowship. Even at that, be careful. Okay, my monitoring spirit. I don't care, I will be your monitoring spirit, where are you going now? I am going to the church. Okay let's go together. The police case continues. We must search everywhere. We must not leave any stone unturned, search everywhere. All right. Look at what I found. There is nothing here. I think we should go to the maid's room and the gate man's room, since they are the room we have not checked. I think you are right, let's go. Sir, this is what we found during the search, a diary, I think it belongs to Vera, it was found in Pastor James' closet, and this substance in Pastor Richard's house, sir the context of this diary is very shocking sir. They will almost be killed, what does that mean, it's alright, take the substance to the narcotic section for analysis, we need to know what it is. Yes sir. I need to see the lady, the lady is too stubborn. Yes, I am stubborn. Look woman, I am not here to trade words with you. And I am not here to buy it either. We found this in Pastor James house, your house, who are the people you are trying to kill. Pastor James and his members. Ha 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 ha. Do you think I am playing, speak up. Mr. DPO, I think I am ready to confess now. I'm all his. 
There was a time something was disturbing me and my husband, so I tried telling my husband but he was not listening, so I decided to write it down in my diary. Who are those you are trying to kill or what are those? Cockroaches. What did you just say? Cockroaches. What rubbish, nonsense. Hello, poison. So the substance you found in her house is actually a poison. Potion, you poisoned your husband, I will deal with you. You can deal with me. What happened before the police case? Vera, you know I have a limited time to spend in this school, meaning I will soon graduate. I know. And I have something very important to discuss with you. I am all his. I don't know how to say it but I must say it. Say it anyhow. Alright, I want us to start a relationship that will be leading to marriage. Vera, I love you so much, and I know that God has a hand in it. Are you joking right now? Joking. I am not joking, I am serious, I am deeply in love with you. Have you prayed about it? Like I said earlier, God has his hands in it. You will give me time to think about it and pray about it. What is funny? Is it not surprising that you are asking me for a relationship? Vera, you know I have always loved you. Okay, I will pray about it. At the police station. I don't know sir. I will ask you again, do you know anything about Pastor Richard's death? I don't know sir. What is this? I don't know sir. We found this in your bag, inside your room. Sir, I don't have anything like that in my bag, I didn't know, I don't know anything about it. Did you poison your boss? God forbid, I can never poison my boss, he is a good man, he is a good man to me and my family, I don't know what they are talking about, I don't know anything about it. I don't want to use iron hand on you because you are a girl, but I will call the female officer. What happened before the police case? Vera, you said you wanted to see me. What I wanted to say to you is that, after so much thoughts and prayers, I want to be your wife. Thank you, thank God. You know I need to inform my dad. Yes, that will be when. After this session I will go home and inform him, and you also need to inform your dad. Definitely I will do that, thank you Vera, let us go to the night class. I have told her my intentions. And then? What did she say? She has accepted. Wonderful. Beautiful. But dad, I am having a feeling that this is not proper. It's not. As a Christian we shouldn't be doing this. Will you stop that? That feeling you have is from the pit of hell and I reject it in Jesus name. So what we are doing here is not proper. But it is proper for Pastor Michael to kill my wife. It is proper for us to go days without food. Is that proper? It is proper for me not to afford to pay your school fees. That is proper right? Let me even ask you a question. Ask dad. How much do you think I am earning as a pastor in the church? Hmm, let me say $20,000. You don't know anything. The amount you just mentioned is four times more than my salary. I earn $5,000 per month, if not for the help of friends and church members. Do you think I will be able to afford all this? Yet Pastor Michael makes at least $25,000, you know I know as an insider. His salary all his allowances is more than $25,000 per month. Look at the disparity, and for God's sake we started this church together, we are like partners. Despite all this, I am still his most loyal pastor. This is too bad. Look, the man hate me with passion, he doesn't even want to see my face at all, he is afraid that I will overthrow him. Yet this ministry is not his personal property. We started it together, I know what I have invested into this church, it's like I have shares, I have shares in this church, I must have my dividend, yes. I must collect my profits, see I am not ready to throw away my investments in this church, and that is why I have a plan in place and you are part of the plan. I am making alignment by the grace of God, you will be the next general overseer of the church. We are going to get Pastor Michael out of the way. Pastor Richard you didn't tell me you were coming. You didn't give any notice that you were coming. What are you looking for at this time? It is deliberate. Pastor Michael, I came here to remind you something. And what is that? I am here to remind you that we got this vision together. I am here today to remind you that I am not your servant, but your equal. I came here today to remind you that your nonchalant attitude led to the death of my wife. Finally. I am here to remind you that the church, that church belongs to the both of us. 
Where are all this coming from for crying out loud? I got the vision, I got the vision to start a church right from the seminary, I told you. And you said you were going to support me, you didn't say we are going to be equal, you said where I go to, you will go, whatever I do you do, and you will support me, so how come the equality here? That is the power, today, this very day will be your end. Hello Vera. Hello sir, how are you sir? And how is the Church of God? I am fine, the Church of God is fine, but somebody is gone. Who is that? Your father. My dad. Where? How? Jesus? Pastor Michael was a very good man. He was a devoted and committed worker in God's vineyard. I will miss him dearly. You all know that we were very close. He is an humble man and gentle. He is even spiritual. He can sacrifice anything if it is in his power. Pastor Michael, we will miss you. Let us take a minute's silence for the departed soul of Pastor Michael. We need someone to occupy the position of the general overseer to take the mandate. Yes, that is true. Who else than Pastor Richard? This is a spiritual matter. I will want us to pray about it before we conclude. Please hold on Ma. Are you trying to say that we are not spiritual? Are you saying that all the pastors here is not spiritual? I am beginning to suspect you. It seems you have vested interest in this case. Maybe you have even been eyeing this position for the general overseer before he departed? Look, you know I was the closest pastor to him. Our general overseer revealed some things to me. He told me personally that when he is no more that he wants me, Pastor Richard to take over from him as as the new general overseer. In fact he told me that, it was the Holy Spirit instruction, and I am ready, the Holy Spirit has prepared me for this assignment and I am prepared to occupy the position of the General Overseer. Since you are prepared no problem then, you are our General Overseer from now on, congratulations sir. Thank you, and I want to promise you that during my time as the General Overseer of this church, we are going to experience unlimited growth. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And supernatural expansion, numerically, financially, and spiritually. Amen. Dad, between you and I, do you know anything about the death of Vera's dad? Yes son, I do. Jesus. In fact, I am the killer. Jesus. Dad why, why? I had no choice, he made me do it. You had a choice not to do it, you are now a murderer, a killer. Will you shut up your mouth and listen to me? Look, I did this for us, in fact, I did this for you in particular, look, now everything belongs to us, even the church. Will you settle down and get that into your head? Even your mother who is in heaven will be happy now because things are changing for us for the better, so settle down. Look what happened has happened. Pastor Michael deserved to be killed. After all he killed your mother, that is karma for you. But dad, that is painful, it is painful. I know that it is painful but that is it. That is the reality, an eye for an eye. A tooth for a tooth, that is karma, now let's put that aside, how is Vera? She is still sad and sorrowful. I want both of you to get married after your youth service here. So fast dad, why are you doing this? Why? There is no time to waste, what are you waiting for again? Tell her I want to see her this evening. My daughter, I am very sorry for what happened, it is really very painful. I am practically an orphan, I lost my dad, I lost my mum, I have lost everything, there is nothing for me again, everything is gone. Don't say that my daughter, I am here for you, from now on consider me as your father, and of course James too is there for you, you have a new family be rest assured, it will be well with you. Thank you sir. My son James said he likes you and he wants to marry you. He told me sir, that was what I was about to tell my dad before he passed on. It is quite unfortunate, but you see, I have prayed about it and the Holy Spirit told me expressly that the two of you are meant to be together, that is what the Holy Spirit told me. Yes sir. Look, you will not have any problem because my hands are in it, my legs are in it, even the whole of my body are in it. Thank you sir. And be rest assured your education will be fully sponsored by us, we are going to pay your school fees, your accommodations, your feeding, everything. Everything concerning your schooling we are talking it over. Thank you sir. It is well, 
God bless you. At the police station. Are you ready to confess now? Officer, I don't know anything about what you are saying. I am not the one that killed Pastor Michael. Do you want to die? No. I promise you, if you confess, you are going to leave this place. We are going to free you. Are you sure? Yes. I will confess, this is how it went. Before being arrested. Esther, how are you? Hope you are taking care of Pastor Richard. Yes, ma'am. Make sure you take care of him. Yes, ma'am. I want to give you something that you will be adding to his food. It is like vitamin. You know Pastor is always traveling here and there for ministrations. And you know he is my father-in-law so I need to take care of him. I need you to be adding it to his meals. It is a supplement vitamin it will really really help him. I've been putting it inside Pastor Richard's food. That is what happened. So since then you have been putting it inside your boss's food. Yes, sir. Even the night before he died I put it. You started putting it since when? Two weeks ago. Good. Officer, when will you now release me? I will release you but not now. What happened before the police station? My son James has just completed his studies, so I want him as my right-hand man and personal assistant. That means he will be employed in this church as a pastor and he will be paid his salary. No, sir. With due respect this is not how we ordain people as pastors in this church and I am sure you know, anybody that wants to be ordained as a pastor must undergo training, and he has not, so please sir. He can't be a pastor, we need to follow the order of things, before we do this. Let us follow the letting of the Holy Spirit, our bishop said God is leading him to do this, the Bible said we should obey the authority, he is the authority of our time. Let us follow what the Lord is leading him to, let us abide by it. God bless you my dear deacons, God bless you. Thank you sir. I want you to know that is what I want and that is what will happen, what is the meaning of all this. If you don't respect me as a person, can't you respect the anointing on my head and the position I occupy? Objection, I still object to your submission, this is not about respecting your anointing, we are talking about the law of the church. The law of the church says anybody that wants to be ordained as a pastor must do this two things, one, he must be trained, two, he must be married, he is not yet trained, he is not yet married sir, he cannot become a pastor, we can't ordain him yet, please sir. There is no problem we are going to do a clash training program and concerning the other issue I am happy to announce to you that my dear son will be getting married in the next two months. To Vera Michael, the daughter of our late general overseer, I ordain my son in the name of the Father, Son and Holy Spirit. What is that? I don't know, I said I don't know. Officer bring her in, do you know her? I know her. She said you gave her this substance, answer me. Ma, I beg you please tell them the truth, they promised to release me. Yes, I gave her. So you are the one behind the killing of your husband and his dad? Before I can say anything, I need Pastor Julius here. Who is Pastor Julius? Who is my Bible club teacher, and a person in my church. Vera, this is Pastor Julius, are you now ready to confess? Please confess. My husband got married to me when I was 22 years old, I was in 300 level when we got married, after a year of the marriage, my husband's father came to the house to say hello to us, I excused myself. I went to the kitchen to prepare what we are going to eat, they were having some discussions. Ask Vera to give you her properties. You know that Pastor Michael has a lot of lands and properties and they're all in her name. She has not. What are you waiting for for God's sake? Force her, pressure her to do so. Dad, I am not like you, and I can't force her to give me what she has. Shut up your mouth. I have invested so much into this, I must not fail. Your bloody investment, so you are saying I should kill her the way you killed her father. Shut up. Sir, hope all is well. Yes, we are just talking like father and son. Okay, let me go back to the kitchen. That was how I discovered that my husband and my father's best friend were the ones that killed my father, and they have to ruin me and my father's legacy. Pastor Julius, you have taught me how to forgive, and my father has also taught me how to forgive but if it were you, will you forgive? Thank God you know Pastor Richard. And thank God you know Pastor Michael my father, officer you said I should talk, I have talked. What do you have to say about this Pastor Julius? Oh God, this is serious, but Vera I want you to know that what happened to you happened for a reason, I know it is very difficult to forgive, very difficult. 
With these things you have said I know it is very difficult to forgive, but can we neglect the word of God? The scripture says the land of God is merciful. He forgives the sins we commit against him daily. Because of that he sent his son to the world to die for our sin. He that is without sin drunk the cup of our unrighteousness. Remember the Bible says forgiveness is key to the kingdom of God. So you have to forgive. Find a place in your heart to forgive. I have told you the story about my own mother. How her best friend killed her. If it were you, will you forgive? Dear, what is wrong? You screamed from your dream. I had a very terrible dream. And what dream is that? Pastor Julius, I don't know what I did to my wife. She has been behaving somehow, sometimes quiet, sometimes moody, and always crying. Vera, what is happening? Vera, what happened? Look, I am your father. You can talk to me. You requested that four of us should come together for a meeting and we are here. Please Vera speak up. I had a dream, Pastor Richard and my husband, what happened to my father? And why did you get married to me? Nobody knows. Saw his dead body on the floor. You killed my father, you both killed my father. No, no, Vera take it easy. You said you had a dream and in the dream you said I and my son killed your father. Vera, it was just a dream, it is not true. I will never ever kill your father. You killed my father. I didn't. What kind of accusation is this for God's sake? You killed him. Pastor Julius, we killed her father. What? Why did you kill him? What was his offense? All I can say is envy and jealousy, but my father orchestrated it all. Pastor Richard, tell me what James is saying is not truth. It wasn't intentional. It wasn't. Pastor Michael took everything that belongs to the both of us. He shared his vision of becoming a pastor with me and I encouraged him and we started together. We did massive evangelism and village outreach but for seven to eight years we had no results. Pastor Michael was discouraged but I encouraged him, I was the one working full time. I supported the ministry with my money, my salary, in fact I used my salary to run the ministry, on the land where the church auditorium is, it's my land, later, I went into full time ministry too. When things changed for the church, when our congregation increased, when money started coming, Pastor Michael got married and since then forgot me, I lacked, I suffered and we started this thing together. So I started to get back what rightfully belongs to me, my investments in the church, that was why I killed him. If I may ask, who owns the church? It is my land, the church belongs to me. No, the church is not yours neither does it belong to Pastor Michael, the church belongs to God, you allowed the devil to use you, you need to give your life to Jesus Christ and ask for forgiveness. I am ready sir. Lord Jesus I thank you. Hello, who is speaking? Where, where is my husband? Which hospital, where is Calvary Hospital, I am coming. Vera, please find it in your heart to forgive me, I love you so much. I love you too, I am ready to forgive you. Doctor, doctor. Madam we are so sorry we lost him. No. I have done this evil and terrible thing, I am here to seek for your forgiveness, and to drop the leadership of this church, and submit myself to any punishment you may give me. I know that what I did is so bad and terrible, but I am now a changed person, I have surrendered my life to Christ, I am now born again so please forgive me, I plead for your forgiveness. Pastors of this church, I have forgiven Pastor Richard, I pray the father of my unborn child rest in peace, with all this being said, I am ready to hand over the church to Pastor Julius. Vera why? Is this not too much? I am just an ordinary children pastor. How can I occupy the exalted position? Congratulations sir. Thanks for watching. Like share and subscribe. Don't forget to click on notification bell in order to be notified when another video is being posted.